Hey, what's happening, guys? Happy cold January morning, depending on where you're at. I mean, if you're in uh, Brazil, it's probably pretty nice. <clears throat> but here in Ohio, it's cold. It's five degrees. Humidity is way down, so it's extremely dry. Whew. Nasty, nasty weather. I see why retired folk move to uh, Florida and Arizona now. Okay, so what we're going to do today is take a quick look at this book was sent in by a great friend of the channel, Uncle Rob. He was, you know, famous for uh, Rob's original solder flux. So this book is 1969-1968, uh, right about the time I was born. It's, it's vintage Paul. Anyway, it's 49 Easy Transistor Projects. Looks like it's by Robert W. Brown and Tom Knedel, Kneedle, Needle, whatever. <laughs> These are the kind of books I liked when I was a kid, like the Forrest Sims stuff. Forrest Mims, good lord, still early in the morning. So we have wireless home broadcaster, unusual hand motion. I mean, just a ton of interesting... Little transistor circuits. Wireless home broadcaster. A sub-miniature microphone that can be built into an empty hard pack cigarette box. Yeah. There were a lot of them around when I was a kid. My dad smoked Salem's. And a pipe. We also got hand motion music maker. Here's a unique mystery box that when placed near an ordinary AM radio will produce musical sounds. The secret is in the body capacitance created by moving your hand near the music maker enclosure, which incidentally should not be metal. So basically, it's kind of a theremin, but instead of having a built-in speaker, it broadcasts it to an AM radio. It's using a couple of PNP transistors. Inductor. That's obviously to tune the tank circuit for uh, the broadcast. 9 volt battery power switch. Another inductor there. Yeah. So it even tells you about the circuit. The heart of the unusual hand motion music maker is a double transmitter circuit with two separate RF signals one there and one there, which radiate to the nearby table or transistor radio by means of a large antenna loop of coil. By carefully placing or locating a blank spot on the lower portion of the radio dial, you adjust capacitor number two. Where is C2? Right there. It's the a uh, variable capacitor. Until you reach that frequency and boom, you're in. Now back in these early days, the late 60s, early 70s, the ham radio was a big thing. And back then you needed to learn Morse code, or what they call CW, continuous wave, in order to get your license. So to do that, you would need a code practice oscillator. And here's one. Here's the circuit. It says you can adjust the pitch of the CW notes to any desired frequency by the setting of R3. R1, R2. Where's R3? Oh, there it is, R3, potentiometer. No power switch is required unless the key right there is momentarily depressed. No current will be drawn from the battery. You can feed this oscillator into a headset speaker adapter circuit and wind up with room-filling sound of beep, 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 beep. Ah, I love this kind of stuff. See, back in, back in these days, what? One transistor AM radio. They told you about the circuit. They showed you the circuit. And then they gave you everything you needed to build the circuit. And if you worked your way through a book like this, you would most definitely find yourself learning a lot about electronics. You know, my thing were those Radio Shack uh, 
201 project kits where it told you you have the little springy things and you hook the wires to the springs and oh, you know, now you made this blink and now you made this beep and that opened a lot of uh, a lot of opportunity for me in learning CB field strength meter back then of course the CB radio citizens band radio was really big in fact my cousin Mark met his first wife over the CB radio back in the 70s <laughs> and she only tried to kill him twice Field strength meter for a CB radio. Measure the RF output of a given transmitter. You can accurately determine the point of maximum transmitter, including non-licensed walkie-talkie. Merely bring a one-inch whip close to the CB antenna and adjust R1 for one-third to half-scale meter reading on M1. If the needle appears to be going, blah, 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 blah. but here's your circuit. We have an antenna. We have a tapped coil there. Diode, PNP transistor our power source and a potentiometer for adjustment I mean it's just it's incredible microphones sun powered code practice oscillator sensitive Geiger look I'm making a Geiger counter uh, let's see yeah you still have to have a Geiger too Geiger Mueller too I was wondering if they were trying to tell you how to build one without a Geiger Mueller I'm like that's something I'd like to know but no, you have to have a Geiger Mueller tube. See? 1B86 Geiger tube. Audio amplifier. Metronome push pull receiver. Hi fi audio mixer. CW monitor. So I'm not going to go and read through all these. I just wanted to share this with you. I think it is an incredibly cool book. I want to thank Uncle Rob for sending this out and, uh, if you guys want to see any of the projects in here built, let me know and we'll do it. Otherwise, enjoy your weekend. That's it. I'm out. Peace.